1971, the game for number one. Unbeaten and untied Nebraska versus unbeaten and untied Oklahoma. This ABC sports exclusive is being brought to you by Brute for Men by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything, Brute by Fabergé. By Texaco, the many thousands of Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. Trust Texaco to have the right gasoline for your car. By General Motors and the people who make Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, Opel, and GMC trucks. The cars and trucks with the GM mark of excellence. And by your independent insurance agent who reminds you insurance is too important to entrust to an amateur. So see a pro. You'll find him where you find this big eye symbol. showcase of college football as we look at the number one ranked team of the nation in the white jerseys the Cornhuskers from Nebraska being intercepted by the Sooners of Oklahoma in the crimson jerseys they are ranked number two the game to decide who is number one the two top ranked teams in the nation a football classic that's been building for weeks ever since Oklahoma defeated convincingly the University of Texas. We have a carnival atmosphere here, ladies and gentlemen, a holiday atmosphere. And the man on my left is the fellow that started the football prominence right here at Oklahoma, Charles Bud Wilkinson. And Bud, this is a game that I think has more buildup, more excitement than any I've done in the sum 500. Well, any time you have the best offensive team in the country statistically that played a tough schedule like Oklahoma against the best defensive team in the country, you know something is really going to be sparkle and different than you normally get it. Uh, the Nebraska offense, one of the things to look for that's unusual is Johnny Rogers, number 20, one of the more dangerous college football players I've ever seen, is listed as a wingback wide receiver, but he'll line up any place along the line of scrimmage. They hide him, and that makes it almost impossible for us to play him man for man. And uh, the nation's number one defense against scoring. Nebraska will be uh, confronted with a potent offense, their number one in that department, the wishbone. Well, the wishbone offense uh, is really, at the moment, slightly ahead of the defense. Uh, the options along the line of scrimmage uh, are very difficult to play defensively. I can summarize very quickly by saying when I was a single wing football player, we used to run off tackle by double teaming both the tackle and the end. The wishbone going wide does not block the tackle and does not block the end, and that releases four men to block downfield. So uh, it's got something really going for it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's overcast. Uh, not expected to be quite this cool with a very uh, strong wind coming out of the south, 47 degrees, and feeling the brunt of it all is our colleague Bill Fleming. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups. We're going to introduce the offensive teams today. In Nebraska, split in from Gross Point, Michigan, number 32, Woody Cox. Left tackle from East Orange, New Jersey, number 72, Daryl White. Left flag from Los Angeles, number 77, Dick Rupert. Left center from Melrose Park, Illinois, number 54, Doug Dummler. Right guard from Whittier, California, number 65, Keith Wortman. And right tackle, number 71, Carl Johnson. And number 78, Al Austin. At tight end, from Bay City, Michigan, number 85, Jerry List. At quarterback from Green Bay, Wisconsin, number 14, Jerry Taggy. Running back from McCook, Nebraska, number 35, Jeff Kinney. Slot back from Omaha, number 20, Johnny Rogers. Fullback from Kansas City, Kansas, number 44, Bill O. And the head coach of the Cornhuskers, Bob Devaney. Good luck, coach. And now for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Tight end from Oklahoma City, 82, Al Chandler. Left tackle, Middleton, Colorado, 60, Dean Unruh. Left guard from Tulsa, number 73, Darrell Emmett. At center from Midland, Texas, number 54, Tom Brahaney. Right guard from Omaha, number 72, Ken Jones. Right tackle from Yukon, number 79, Robert Jensen. Split end from Abilene, number 12, John Harrison. Left quarterback from Abilene, 11, Jack Milgram. Left quarterback from Clinton, Oklahoma, number 35, Roy Bell. 
That pass back from Henderson, Texas, number 22, Joe Wiley. That fullback from Henderson, Oklahoma, number 17, Leon Crossway. That right half back from Houston, Texas, number 30, Greg Brewer. And the head coach, Chuck Fairbanks. Good luck, coach. Those in the lineup, down back for ABC Broadcasting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you see the spirit that has prevailed here in Norman, Oklahoma. Started. Vance Carlson is the referee for this game to decide the top team in the nation. Co-captains to the near side in the white jerseys, 14 quarterback Jerry Taggy, 18 Jim Anderson, both natives of Green Bay, Wisconsin. For Oklahoma on the far side, we have number 11, Jack Mildren, their quarterback, the injured Glenn King, and number 43, Steve Aycock from Midland, Texas, a linebacker. Let's listen. Skip Merrifield, your back judge. This is Wendell Winkler, your linesman. This is John McClinock, our square official. And this is John Keck, your umpire. Okay, we'll allow Nebraska, the visiting captain, to call the toss in the air. Want it understood that should I drop it, I'll throw it up again. Okay, here we go. You're calling it? All right, heads. All right, Oklahoma, you understand he called heads, is that right? And it's tails. You may have this little minute of the game. You may kick or receive or defend either goal. You will defend this goal, all right? You may kick or receive, all right? Oklahoma wins the toss, chose it to defend, and will kick. And we'll start the game in one minute and keep rolling. Yes, there you see a sellout crowd, probably the largest in the history of football here in Norman, Oklahoma. Somewhere near 64,000 fans on the artificial turf. There is one area that's important today, and that is the neutral zone, which uh, perhaps you may know is the length of the football. That's the battle line. You're looking at it now. The team that seizes control of this area will win. Face to face on the left, number 54, Tom Brahaney, an All American from Oklahoma, and on the right, number 70, Rich Glover of Nebraska. They and the men on either side of them are not as publicized as the backs or ends, but the victors in this area of warfare this afternoon will be the winners of the game. Going back deep now is it'll be Nebraska receiving number 20, the best in the country, returning kicks Johnny Rogers. Number 35 on the far side is Jeff Kenney. Kicking off for the Oklahoma Sooners in the red jerseys, John Carroll, number 10. A 25-mile-an-hour win coming from right to left. And here it is. This is an opportunity for the real Big Red to stand up. After 60 minutes, we'll know what team is at the top of the spot. Nebraska in white. They have their scarlet football pants. Oklahoma on the right with crimson jerseys and white pants. We hope you're watching in color. You're comfortable. And as soon as that ball is touched, the game will be underway. Johnny Rogers in his own end zone. 5, 10, 15, 20. Coming out to the 25. And he was denied about five yards as it's of his average kickoff return. OK, bud, we're ready as we look at the Nebraska line. Cox and List to the ends. With White and Johnson the tackles, Worthman and Rupert the guards, Dumbler is the center. While in the backfield, Jerry Taggy, number 14, a great rusher, 35, Jeff Kenney, the fullback, Bill Olds, 44, and Johnny Rogers, number 20. Watch for him. At the moment, he's just outside the near side tackle. We have Cox also outside. So from the 26-yard line, first down, Nebraska, Jerry Taggy. And his very first pass is completed to Johnny Rogers. I was really a little surprised, Chris. It is a strong win from the right of your screen to the left of the screen. Oklahoma, however, with the potent offense, having won the toss, chose to kick the ball, taking the win, rather than to unleash their own wishbone. A beautiful seven-yard gain, so it's second down and three. There you see the win. It's dying down just a bit, but it'll gust on the 33-yard line. Nebraska, Jerry Taggy, number 14. And to the deep back, it's Jeff Kenney, who will stop after a yard gain. And it's done by Mark Driscoll, number 59, who is joined by 43 Acock, 81 Qualls. In the linebacker positions, we have Raymond Hamilton and Lionel Day as the ends. Moore and Selman are the tackles defensively with Pope, Roach, Shelley, and O'Shaughnessy in the defensive backfield. No gain on the play, so it's third down and three. The real test for the Nebraska defense right off. Rogers to the far side. Baggy. 
22-yard gain. It doesn't appear that they made it, so the Oklahoma defense, which hasn't received much publicity because of the potent offense of the wishbone, have done their job with Acock leading the defensive move at about the 35, bud. We're going to have the measurements, Chris, but uh, quite positive you called it correctly. Oklahoma's defense this afternoon will play a very much of an attacking pattern of play. By that, uh, I know that they feel that they must force Nebraska to make it across the line of scrimmage, and when you are forcing everything, you're vulnerable to the big, big game, but Nebraska will have the ball all day if you don't play it that way. All right. Now end the punt for Nebraska. We have number 26, Jeff Hughes. John Shelley is deep for the Oklahoma Sooners in the area of the 28-yard line. He's looking at the ball. It takes a bounce in reverse, and finally, very wisely, downed at the 32-yard line by Doug Dumler, who snapped the ball. A 32-yard punt, and now with the wind to their back after stopping Nebraska. Nebraska moved the ball. Nine yards were forced to punt, and there's the offensive line for the Sooners. Jack Miller in the cornerback. Roy Bell is starting instead of junior Joe Wiley, a sensation, but you'll see him later. And the real sensation, number 30, Greg Pruitt. Byron yeah, Crosswhite, number 17, is the fullback. Here's the wishbone now. First and 10 for the Sooners with the ball at the 33. And Leon Crosswhite, number 17, carried on the play. All-American Larry Jacobson, number 75, and Glover, number 79, in white, made the stop. Let's watch Glover. We had him on against Brahaney just before we kicked the ball off, and he's defeating Brahaney here and making the tackle of Crosswhite. Two All-Americans having a battle up front. Let's see him now. They're head-to-head -head right there. Almost looks illegal. Has won a second down and eight from the 35. Mildren trying to pull away, but couldn't. Jack Mildren as number 45, Bob Terrio, who has made more solo tackles on the Nebraska defensive unit than any of the players. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds for local station identification. All right, number 45 in white, Bob Terrio. Tim Welch is in at fullback for Oklahoma. Third and seven for the Sooners. And the wishbone is being effectively defensed by the Nebraska unit. Mildred Caring and Jim Branch, number 51 in the white jersey, made the stop right at about the 38-yard line. It'll be fourth down and five, bud. As the ball is snapped, Nebraska has 11 men coming toward that line of scrimmage, and they're going to be a little vulnerable for the play-action passes that operate off the wishbone fakes. Joe Wiley back to punt. Johnny Rogers, number 20. He uh, returns punts as well as kickoffs. It's high in the air, which is what uh, Wiley wanted to do, so there'd be kick covers, and Rogers gets away. Look at that. Johnny Rogers. Look at the move by that sensational player, a native of Omaha, and he is going, going, gone. Bob Terrio through the last block that got Johnny Rogers into the Oklahoma end zone and Nebraska number one leads six to nothing after about 75 yards. Offside against Oklahoma, needless to say. Jerry Taggart will get the final chat with the referee. At the moment, however, we have a timeout here at On Field. The offside penalty on the try for the point has been assessed on the ensuing kickoff, which is about to happen. It's being teed up on the 45-yard line instead of the 40 is Nebraska. At 11.28 of the first quarter, Johnny Rogers, best in the country, went 72 yards with a punt to score. Joe Wiley and Greg Pruitt are deep now, two fine runback artists, as Rich Sanger has the ball teed up in the center of the field. Into the wind from the 45 is the Nebraska kick. And it is bobbled. It's taken by Greg Pruitt at the five, coming out to the 10, makes his outside move, and a very fine tackle put on the play. Let's take a look at that touchdown. Just a marvelous individual effort. There's one missed tackle. When you're trying to tackle someone as elusive as Rogers, you do miss some. He almost is on the ground, recovers. Watch this little wrinkle here. Back inside. He's past the first wall now. He head fakes past the official. Breaks to the outside, and then turns on that speed. 
And now back live from the 15-yard line, the wishbone with Mildred running it to the outside. Getting little yardage because Jim Branch was the first to hit him. Jacobson was second, and then number 27, Lahawk of Columbus, Nebraska, making the stop at the 18-yard line. That's Oklahoma's fourth offensive snap, and they run each one to the narrow side of the field. Nebraska has been all season a very wide field conscious football team. They feel that they're still that way, and they want to straighten them up and balance them up. John Harrison at the bottom of your screen on a second down and seven. Greg Pruitt showing you his style. Pruitt, one of the contenders for the Heisman Trophy, gets the first down and the initial one for the Oklahoma Sooners, who are trailing 7 to nothing. as we have 10.47 to go in the first quarter. If you can't make the regular offense from the wishbone operate, the three options, the counter play usually is open. And this is the counter. Glover moving quickly to the outside against the first fake was cut down by Brahaney. And the wishbone first and 10 from the 35. And Leon Crosswhite, the fullback, number 17, goes for a couple of yards. Incidentally, Pruitt picked up a beautiful gain of 17 yards. His average per play was nine and a half yards this year. Scored 15 touchdowns as we isolate the middle guard number 79 of Nebraska, Glover. This is Glover again fighting past Brahaney, using his superior strength, tackling Crosswhite. And if the man over the center can move to the outside and stop the fullback, you've done a great deal to take away the three options. Second down and eight from the 37. Crosswhite carrying the ball as Nebraska put in a uh, new right tackle on defense. Number 90, John Dutton replacing Bill Jansen. The ball is across the 40 to the 41. It'll be 39 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Oklahoma with the ball, third and four. Harrison comes to the near side. Mildren. Mildren appears to have made the first down for Oklahoma. There's some of the variety of the wishbone attack. That's the counter option play. The first fake being to the bottom of the screen, then the fake to Pruitt. Uh, and that's the fake uh, on the play. He made 17 yards on just a few moments ago. Then back out with the regular outside option on the end. Mildred keeping for the first down. First and 10 from the 45. Nebraska leading 7 to nothing. 9-14 to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma with the ball. Ooh. Hit hard by Rick Rich Glover and Jacobson 75 was Greg Pruitt number 30. Glover now already bud with four tackles. The Oklahoma runners you see their phenomenal average per carry. Pruitt 9.5, Mildred 6.3, Crosslight 5. Everybody averaging over five yards per try for the season. This drive started at the 15. Now it's second and nine for own 46. Oklahoma. <laughs> You'll see that Nebraska linemen and linebackers are huge. But you'll also notice how agile they are. Larry Jacobson, number 75, and Terrio, number 45, are two of the finest. Converging on number 11, Jack Mildred. Here's that defensive unit for Nebraska. Atkins, 57, Jacobson, 75, 45, Terrio, 79, Glover, 51, Branch, Jansen, 55, back in, 81, Willie Harper, Lahawk, 27, Mason, 25, Cush, 24, and Anderson, 18. And on third and long, most teams are going to throw the ball, but the wishbone team still usually likes to run. However, Mildred going with a long ball here. John Harrison pulling in what was a hanging pass that wobbled most of the way. Bill Cush, however, could not defend against Harrison. And Mildred, who has completed only 22 passes, yet has thrown only 45 and seven touchdowns, did the big one. Let's take a look at it again. Inside fake. And the ball may be wobbling in the air, but it's right on the target. First and 10 now from the Nebraska 21. Oklahoma. Again from the wishbone, Leon Crosswhite from Hennessy, Oklahoma, carrying on the play. Rich Glover again on the tackle as he gets a pat on the back from 51, Jim Branch. And Glover did get help in that case from Bob Terrio as the ball now is marked at the 19. It's second down and eight. Nebraska leading seven to nothing with 7.17 to go first quarter. And Oklahoma has it where they want it, right in the middle of the field where they can go either way equally well. Harrison to the far side, split away. Good gang tackling by the Nebraska defense, including uh, Bill Jansen, 55, 
Jim Anderson 18 and Terry 45 as we look at Chuck Fairbanks in his sixth year here. He's a graduate of Michigan State and there you see his one and lost record as head coach. The man who was an assistant under Frank Cush at Arizona State Bill Yeoman in Houston. And in his very first year with the Sooners his team won the Big Ten they upset Tennessee in the Orange Bowl. Now it's a third down and six. Leon Crosswhite trying for the yardage and Terrio is 45 in the Nebraska white jersey. And the defensive strategy of Nebraska is very apparent. Oklahoma being the great rushing team, they're simply going to close everything down on the running attack and attempt to force Oklahoma to throw the ball. John Carroll is the field goal kicker, number 10 for the Oklahoma Sooners. He's hit on 7 of 10 this year and on a fourth down and two from the 13. This kick will come from the 20 plus the 10 yards of the end zone on an angle. 30-yard attempt is up and good. A 30-yard perfect kick by John Carroll of Oklahoma with 5.57 to go in the first quarter. ABC and the NCAA combined to bring you the thrills of college football. With timeout, the score, o Oklahoma 3, Nebraska 7. Well, a 30-yard field goal by John Carroll of Oklahoma has closed the gap a bit on the number one ranked team, Nebraska. Nebraska leading 7-3, 5.57 to go in the first quarter. If we look at 20, Rogers, Kenny 35 on the far side awaiting John Carroll's kick following the field goal. Ball is in the air with the wind behind. It's Jeff Kenny who comes out to the 10, has a blocker ahead of him, moves across to the 20 and puts his head down and comes out to the 25. Giving up precious few rushing passing yards per game has become quite a Nebraska tradition during the Devaney decade. NCAA statistics show that the Cornhuskers have finished in the top 20 nationally in total defense nine times in the last 10 years. That old saying, Chris, if you only get the ball by receiving kickoffs after the other team score, you're not very likely to win often. After Oklahoma drove 72 yards and then kicked uh, a 30-yard field goal, Nebraska leading 7-3, first and 10 at their own 24. Kenny was in motion. Taggy looking. Taggy. Very difficult to bring down. He weighs 215 pounds. Number 88. 98 rather Lucius Selman and Bruce Deloney in on the play and there is a loss back to the 18 yard line a loss of six second and 16 bud and a new wrinkle with Kenny going in motion that takes the eye slot and makes it a spread formation after they've been set up in the eye. Kenny Olds and Rogers ready along with Woody Cox to the near side on second and 16. Great defensive play on Johnny Rogers. Steve O'Shaughnessy of Midland, Texas, number 18, livens the Sooner cheering section on the far side of the field. And the press box staffs, both Chuck Fairbanks and Bob Devaney, are looking at these defenses and reading them and trying to pick up what the keys are to unlose the offense just a little bit. Rogers, 20 to the left and bottom of your screen. On third down and 16, we'll watch him from the 18-yard line, Nebraska. And on the delay, Bill Olds, the fullback. Not enough, of course, for the first down, but look at the desire of John Shelley of Oklahoma City, number 33, a senior, showing us how he can tackle. He's a boy that has five interceptions as well on the year. So with the ball at the 24, it's fourth down and 10, and the sun begins to come through the cloud. John Shelley awaits Jeff Hughes punt for Nebraska. Nearly blocked. It's high in the air, coming down at midfield and going back into Nebraska territory at the 44. The Oklahoma has field position at about the 45. The punt officially measured at 21 yards as Nebraska leads 7 to 3, 356 to go in the first quarter. Steve Acock. And again, Chris, for someone who tuned in late, we should point out that there's a very strong wind blowing from the right of your screen to the left of the screen. Nebraska putting into the wind. We have a timeout here at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, where the score is Nebraska 7, Oklahoma 3. 
who is number one? This is the game that will decide it here in Norman, Oklahoma, as we have three minutes and 56 to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma, good field position at the Nebraska 45. First down, they trail seven to three. Mildred, thank you. And throwing on first down, looping one out there, Albert Chandler, who has caught four touchdown passes in the last four games, was covered by Jim Anderson, Chandler had gotten behind Jim, but the pass was long. You know tonight on ABC at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, it's Georgia versus Georgia Tech from Atlanta, Georgia. And at halftime of this game, the Downtown Athletic Club of New York will make its annual announcement of the Heisman Trophy winner. That's tonight on ABC, and one of the leading candidates is in the Oklahoma backfield. Number 30, Greg Pruitt. Harrison goes to the far side. It is Pruitt in the slot on second down and 10. Joe Wiley in the lineup for the first time, number 22 is stopped by number 79 again, Rich Glover, a junior from Jersey City, New Jersey. And the Nebraska defense looking awfully strong. The unit that's on the field now has given up an average of only 3.5 points per game. Let's watch Glover again. He's the anchor to the defense. You're not tough down the middle. There's no place to go. He beat a double team that time. Uh, Jones and Dehaney both moving in, but he went right between them. He's had six tackles, one assist. So we have a third down and 10 for Oklahoma. Mildred trying to make it up with a pass. Too high again. John Harrison, the intended receiver, so it brings up a fourth down and 10. And if you just joined us, Nebraska took the opening kickoff, went nine yards, had the punt. Oklahoma then went five yards, forced to punt, and on it, Johnny Rogers returned at 72 yards for Nebraska to score. Then Oklahoma went 72 yards, stalled, so they kicked a successful 30-yard field goal. And that's the situation right now as we look at Johnny Rogers, who uh, the last time he fielded a punt, he scored. Joe Wiley will do the punting for Oklahoma. We have three minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Seven to three to score. Raheem Smith to Wiley. Wiley's kick. Rogers looking at it at the 12. Hemmed in. And this time there were enough Sooner jerseys there to make sure. Greg Pruitt, number 30, was one of the tacklers. So the ball now is dead. As we look at a big score, Texas 7, Texas A&M nothing, bud. And Texas, uh, if they win this game, will return to the Cotton Bowl. Texas A&M wins. Uh, Texas A&M would go to the Liberty, uh, Liberty Bowl. Arkansas will be in the Liberty Bowl, however, if Texas defeats Texas A&M. And number 97, Derlin Moore, a defensive right tackle for Oklahoma, was in quickly on Jeff Kenny on a first and 10 from the 19. But he did gain, let's call it two yards, to the 21, so it'll be a second down and eight. Seven to three to score. If you just joined us, that's an OU cheerleader. But in the white jerseys, we were about to say the number one team in the nation, Nebraska. Second and eight. Taggy. Out of bounds, Woody Cox, number 32. Nearly stayed in. Two minutes and 28 seconds remaining, and then Nebraska will have the wind at their back, which will make it a little easier for Jerry Taggy's passing. So it brings up a third down and eight. Boy, there's so much red at Owen Stadium. The last time I saw that much, Bud, was when I looked at my uh, checking account. <laughs> Beautiful here today. Great for the game. Woody Cox and Rogers set away on a third down and eight. Nebraska, good fake by Taggy. Then a little screen, flipped out there to Kenny. He's at the 20, now comes to the 25. A marker is down, and there may have been a clip. On number 65, Keith Wartman, the offensive right tackle. Let's see. Holding called against Nebraska. So apparently the right guard, Wartman, was holding on the play because the official immediately threw the flag in the area. That was on a third and eight. It's kind of a tough decision. They've got fourth and eight. If they do not take the penalty, Nebraska will be kicking into an awfully strong wind. There are two minutes and 17 seconds remaining. Do you want to give them another snap or do you force them to kick into the wind right now? That's what Oklahoma's debating. Steve Aycock told the referee, no go. And I would agree, Chris. <laughs> I would, too. Make him put the ball in the air and get it yourself and have that wind for the next two minutes. Oklahoma's a team all year that has averaged 
more than 30 points in the first half. They have only three thus far as we look at 33. John Shelley awaiting Jeff Hughes' punt into the wind on fourth down. The punt is up, sailing beautifully into the wind as Shelley looks at it at about the 34. He is immediately hit. What timing on the part of Johnny Rogers, number 20. So now the two superstars, you've seen Pruitt make a big tackle following a kick, and then Rogers. The scoring frequency is one of the more interesting statistics. Nebraska has had the ball 91 times, passing to them first and 10 during the season, have scored 52 times. Oklahoma has had 100 possessions thus far during the season and has scored 57. That means they put it on the board better than half the time when they get it first and 10. From the 31, first down with about two minutes to go in the first quarter. 7-3, to three, Nebraska leading is Joe Wiley from Henderson, Texas, number 22, carries on the play. LaHawk in on the play, joined by Glover. And the ball is at the 36, so it'll be a second down and five for Oklahoma. The Sooners send Harrison, number 12, to the far side as a split end from the wishbone. And Tim Welch alternating at fullback with Crosswhite. Carried on the play. An isolated view of number 79, Rich Glover. As we went on the air, we had the same picture you're seeing here, Brahaney against Glover. Glover is right on the line of scrimmage, and he is so strong. His legs are so compact, and he is able to come up underneath the center, throw him back, and move to the ball. Now for Oklahoma with a minute nine to go in the first quarter, third and three. He's out, he's out. And it appears that Tim Welch, the sophomore fullback, is close to the first down. There it is. Branch and Glover make the tackle, but not before Welch gets the Oklahoma first down, sustaining this drive. Seven to three with a punt return of 72 yards by Johnny Rogers. The Nebraska touchdown at 11.28 of the first, and then a 30-yard field goal by Carroll of Oklahoma. So from the 43, Jack Milgren sneaks away. Jim Branch was one of the players in on him, along with Larry Jacobson from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Bob Terrio. Ball is at the 49 of Nebraska. Defensively, when you're keying on the backs and you have a halfback set to play the quarterback, if he comes clean and he misses the tackle, you're in deep trouble. That's what happened that time. Second down and two from the Nebraska 49. And getting close to the first down and losing the ball picked up by number 18 Jim Anderson but apparently the play let's see what the call is it appears that the fumble was recovered could not be advanced correct correct Chris we we're talking about this before the game Oklahoma handling the ball close to the line of scrimmage uh, is a high risk offense Pruitt gets the ball here from Mildred but as he gets it he takes one or two steps and is hit the ball drops out Blahock making the recovery, and Oklahoma has turned over the ball one time. From the 46 now, Nebraska, first and 10. Time running out the first quarter, 15 seconds to go. Nebraska leads 7 to 3. Tag it to Olds. Olds, the powerful fullback, moves to the 48 of Oklahoma. Kenny Pope was in on the tackle for the Oklahoma defense at the 48-yard line, which, of course, will now bring up a second down and four, but time may have uh, run out in the first period of play. At the end of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen, the score, Nebraska 7, Oklahoma 3. For the last seven years of high school and college, Oklahoma senior Jack Mildren has starred on the field and in the classroom. He enjoys the challenges of both, yet keeps both in proper perspective. Sometimes I think maybe the college athlete has a problem in the fact that he is looked upon as uh, maybe an athlete student rather than a student athlete. By this, I mean he's totally aware, 100% involved in his football surroundings with 0% involvement in just the school surroundings. And of course, the athlete needs to be able to draw a medium in the fact that he's, he is concerned, is uh, greatly concerned with his football, with his football team, you know, and because this is one reason that he is to it is at college, but uh, really the main reason that an athlete gets a chance to go to college is to be like everyone else and to, to get a college degree. And we're hopeful at Oklahoma that most of our guys are 
trying to reach out, become a part of the student body, and becoming student athletes rather than athlete students. Jack Mildren of Oklahoma is just another example of the type of student athlete who participates in college football today. Two teams, numbers one and two in the nation. Nebraska averaging 39 points a game, Oklahoma 45. As we go into the second quarter, it's Nebraska leading seven to three with a second and four at the Oklahoma 48. Jerry Taggy. Taggy is waltzed right back to midfield. Number 43 is co-captain Steve Acock from Midland, Texas, and uh, we have Acock isolated. Let's watch him. He's the middle linebacker, moving down the line with Taggy. Shaking Dunler off, and as Taggy kept the ball to turn upfield, Acock meets him at the crossroads, stops him cold. Now a measurement for Nebraska first down, 14 Taggy and White. 88 for uh, Oklahoma is Bruce Deloney of Oklahoma City. And they missed the first down by a few inches. Oklahoma with four first downs. Nebraska is looking for its first first down of the game. But they did have a 72-yard punt return for the touchdown. Here it is. They get it. Jerry Taggy of Green Bay, Wisconsin, a senior quarterback, 6'2", 215 pounds, gets more than enough as the ball is dead at the Oklahoma 44. First down. The first quarter statistics, a great tribute to the Oklahoma defense, uh, holding Nebraska to 25 total yards. Oklahoma making 96 total yards, and Oklahoma keeping possession of the ball, but the great punt return by Johnny Rogers is the difference with Nebraska leading 7-3. And a double wing formation with Frosty Anderson split wide to the far side from the 44 first down. Nebraska with the ball. Taggy. Taggy throwing deep to Rogers. Rogers covered on the play by Steve O'Shaughnessy, number 18. And let me tell you, Taggy threw that ball about 60 yards in the air. This Saturday on ABC, an exciting college football triple header. Army versus Navy from Philadelphia at 1 o'clock. Then, a battle of the unbeatens. Auburn versus Alabama from Birmingham at 4 p.m. Then at 7, it's the Kodak All-America Show, featuring the top 24 players as selected by the Football Coaches Association. Second down and 10 for Nebraska at the 44 of Oklahoma. 7-3 to the score, Nebraska. Nice fake by Taggy. Flips it then at the last moment to Kenny. Little action uh, in the backfield that time, bud. He had all the fakes. He started <laughs> down the line, and when Rogers comes over the ball, believe me, that makes the defense pay very sharp attention. Good execution of the option by Taggy also after making a fine fake to Rogers. So it was a seven-yard gain and brings up a third down and three in the choir-like huddle. This is the nation's number one team, Nebraska. Cox, 32 to the far side. Coming to the near side, Rogers, and as a slot man to the far side is Kenny. Single setback. He carries the ball and gets the first down. 215 pound junior Bill Olds from Kansas City, Kansas. First down. Second of the game for Nebraska. And we're in the second quarter with 13.59 to go. For those of you that just joined us, it's 7 to 3, Nebraska leading. Haycock again, the middle linebacker. Moving away from the Nebraska center, Dummler. And then coming back in, but when you're moving laterally and the ball carrier is moving ahead, you, usually the ball carrier wins the battle and knocks the linebacker back. And the slot eye, Taggy fakes and throws down the middle. Look to be Woody Cox, number 32. Wait till we see the jersey. Correction, it's number 20, Johnny Rogers. Chris, that's one of the best executions. That's, here's the pass, and Hamilton really put the rush on Taggy. He was not blocked at all in the play. Taggy stood in there and threw that perfect strike. Johnny Rogers. We have caught 45 passes coming into the game. Ten touchdowns by way of passing and five by way of running. He's got one touchdown today on a punt return. First and ten from the 19 now. Slot eye again. Taggy. And mixing up the plays to both sides of the field. Derlin Moore, number 97. In on the tackle for the Oklahoma defense that is really being tested now. This drive started at the Nebraska 46 as Pruitt fumbled the ball. 
and Nebraska is making about five or six yards on first down each time. And when you come in there second down and five or second down and four, it really puts all of the pressure on the defense. And the drive being sustained keeps the ball away from the nation's number one offense. On second and five, Jeff Kenny of McCook, Nebraska, number 35, stopped. Bruce Deloney, one of the players, along with number 66, Lionel Day of Houston, Texas. Play is stopped at the 12-yard line, so it'll be third down and three. Third and three. Set with the three, the score, Nebraska leading, coming up to the 12-minute mark of the first half. Nebraska and white, Oklahoma, if you're watching in color, in the crimson jerseys. The slot eye again to the near side of the field. What baking by Taggy. Strong, Chris, uh, for a quarterback, 6'2", 215 pounds. He runs like a tailback. There he is with part of his jersey torn. But nevertheless, he carried the ball to the five of Oklahoma. Many banners here at Owen Field in Norman. The sun trying to uh, peek through again. First and goal now for the Cornhuskers. And Jeff Kenny carried on the play. Kenny, the number one rusher for the Cornhuskers with 807 yards and 12 touchdowns, gets it down to about the one. Fine job of checking signals again by Taggy. He'll automatic at the line of scrimmage about half the time. He picked the hole there. This drive started at the Nebraska 46. Second and goal. Jeff Kenny, touchdown, Nebraska, 13 to 3. And for Kenny, it's his 13th touchdown of the year. The senior from McCool, Nebraska. Keith Wardman and Al Austin blocking on the right side of the line, helping him to get an up and over play. Touchdown came at 11.09 of the second quarter. And that drive typical of Nebraska. Moving out with a great combination of pass run. 54 yards, 12 plays. Rich Sanger to try for the point after. Taggy holding up and good. This is NCAA College Football with timeout to score. Nebraska 14, Oklahoma 3. On the near side, you see Greg Pruitt, number 30, on the far side, Joe Wiley, awaiting the Nebraska kick by Rich Sanger, following a 54-yard drive, and on the 12th play, Jeff Kenny went from the one to get the touchdown of the ball game and earned one, indeed, against the Oklahoma defense. The other Nebraska touchdown was on a 72-yard punt return by Johnny Rogers. Oklahoma on a 30-yard field goal. It's 14-3. to There you see the ball teed up with the wind of their back. Stanger's kick comes, and it's looked at by Greg Pruitt. And incidentally, with the sun out, you look right into the sun as Pruitt was trying to field the ball. And here's the scoring play, climaxing the Nebraska 54-yard drive. Taggy turning, giving the ball to Kinney as Olds leads him into the line. Kinney up and over into the end zone for the score. And in order for Oklahoma to win today, their offense has to keep trying to puncture the Nebraska defense. Nothing held back today, and let's see what the Sooners can do now. First and 10 from the 20, Mildren on the wishbone. But as Mildren saw the defensive moves unfolding, he flipped out to Pruitt, but Jim Anderson, number 18 of Nebraska, was not fooled. Theoretically, you can move the ball with the running play, no matter what the defense is doing, but Nebraska is closing their four secondary men Mason, Kosh, Blaha, and Anderson so quickly that I believe Oklahoma's going to have to hit some passes if they're going to move against this great Nebraska defense. Second down to 10 from the 20. And there is Leon Crosswhite, who injured himself earlier, but is back in. Blaha made the tackle at the 45, make it the 44, as Leon Crosswhite went 22 yards and a first down. Glover has been giving Brahey a, ba a bad time, but here he goes with the movement of Mildred 
But Haney really stays with him. And here goes Crosswhite. And on this next play, first and 10 from the 44, the Sooners get up near midfield, trailing 14 to 3, coming up to the 10 minute mark of the first half. Mildren carrying the ball comes up to the 49, so it'll be second down and five as Blahock and Jansen make the tackle. The ball actually between the hash marks, 48 and 49. Oklahoma on the left. Garrison stuck to the near side. And they just keep trying with that rushing aspect of the wishbone. Crosswhite again, stalled by Bob Terrio. Same play that uh, Crosswhite broke a moment ago, but this time Terrio does not overrun it. Watch him, number 45. Instead of overrunning it, he closes and is right on the tackle. Beautiful form. Shoulder in, legs apart, good balance, leg drive. Dutton is in a tackle replacing Jansen on third and five from the 49. Jack Milden gets the first down. One of the beauties of the wishbone unfolding is Lahat and Branch make the stop at the Nebraska 44. One of the reasons Oklahoma has moved the ball so well all year is that the back that the quarterback fakes to then becomes a blocking back. And Cross White, after faking to the ball, can win and block. The lead halfbacks, Pruitt and Wiley, block exceptionally well. And the timing of where they are in relationship to the ball is very tough for the defense. On the 44 of Nebraska, first down, Oklahoma. Crosswhite angling off across the 40. A moment ago, you saw the Texas, Texas A&M score. Texas leading 28 to nothing, which appears that Texas will be going into the Cotton Bowl, and that means the Liberty Bowl to be seen on ABC December 20th, the night of the 20th. It'll be Tennessee, Arkansas. Great battle. And the Sugar Bowl features Oklahoma and Auburn. So now from the 39, after a five-yard gain, second and five. And Pruitt meets a group of corn huskers. He's a great runner, one of the most effective men in college football, but if there is no room to run, Chris, almost all the backs look alike. And there you see the yardage situation. Third down. The ball is at the 37. Third down, and let's call it three. Nebraska leading 14 to 3 with 7.44 to go in the first half. Milton, first down for Oklahoma. And boy, when things do break with the wishbone, they happen in a hurry. What he did was just juke him with the fake of the pitch. Uh, he turned upfield. Two men could have made the tackle. I believe that it was Mason and Kosh coming in on him. But that little bit of the fake of the pitch to prove it, and they ignored Mildred as he cut between them. An effective runner, as you saw. He's an adequate passer, a boy with quick hands and feet. And he has, in most cases, made the correct decisions under pressure. And there's the stiffest pressure that anybody could face in the Nebraska defense out here this afternoon. First and 10 at the 25 of Nebraska, Oklahoma with the ball. Harrison 12 at the bottom of your screen. Oh, that is just beautifully executed. Glover 79, 27 Blahock. And this is the quarterback counter that Oklahoma has not run so far this year. Mildren will make a quick fake to the right of your screen, and Glover will move with the first fake, and Mildren simply slips out around, and that fake helped Rahaney's block as he turned Glover very effectively here. Boy, two All-Americans, 54 in the red jersey, Brahaney of Oklahoma, 79, Glover. The crowd's cheering, Chris, but if I were Chuck Fairbanks, I'd rather been a foot short and had one more down. All right. The ball is at the 15 of Nebraska. First down, and we have 7.03 to go in the first half. 14-3, Nebraska leading. The number two team in the nation, Oklahoma, with the ball. The reason I said that at first was they're on the 15-yard line if they get more snaps to get it in they're more likely to get it there Milton giving to Crosswhite Crosswhite 6'2 203 pounds is stopped by Branch 51 Bob Terrio is out of the lineup number 45 having sprained his knee Pat Morrell number 40 is in there at the moment but we get word that Terrio will be back 
So the ball is near the 10. Oklahoma with a second down. And six. Leon Crosswhite, the junior from Hennessy, Oklahoma, bulls right down to the five-yard line. And the way the Oklahoma offense is using Pruitt now as a back to fake to is setting up the inside plays for Crosswhite. They're worried Nebraska logically about Pruitt because he is the game breaker. Number 45, Terrio, the linebacker, is in there again. And by the way, a great block by Tim Jones of Omaha, the right guard. On the last play, as we have a first and goal to go at the five for Oklahoma. Jack Mildren had a little bit of a head start, but Terry 45 was at his back, along with 25, Dave Mason. And one more, number 90, John Dutton, a sophomore from Rapid City, South Dakota. As you see the situation here in the first half, clock running, 532, 14-3, Nebraska leading. And here is a second down and goal to go. Let's call it the two. Oklahoma started this drive at their own 20, trying to cap an 80-yard march. 13th play of this drive coming up. There it is. Just waltzes in. Jack Milgram of the Sooners. And some block by Crossway. Wasn't it beautiful? His 14th touchdown rushing. He is nearing the 1,000-yard rushing mark. The quarterback, Jack Mildred, averaging 6.3 per attempt coming into this game. So now it is 14 to 9, and a big point after coming up. We see Carroll number 10. 80 yards, 13 plays. Carroll, 42 of 50 on the point after. Puts this one through the uprights. So what a game to decide which team is number one in the nation as ABC's exclusive coverage of the game of the year will continue with the score. Nebraska 14, Oklahoma 10. Let's pause for a moment. A very spectacular 80-yard scoring drive in 13 plays with the quarterback rushing the ball into the end zone, bud. Right after I had said, Chris, that I uh, thought Oklahoma would need to throw some passes uh, in order to loosen up the Nebraska defense if they were going to score. That's all right. There he is, Mildred. Jeff Kenny and Johnny Rogers are deep as John Carroll will now kick into the wind for Oklahoma. It's 14 to 10 with 5-10 to go. Woo! There's one right in the belly. Number 50, Doug Jamail of Bel Air, Texas, got that one right at the belt. And centers are not supposed to be able to handle the ball that way. If past performance is any guide, today's battle will not end in a tie. Each of these Big 8 conference powers has played only two ties over the last 18 regular seasons, a total of only four ties in their last 361 regular season games. I don't think there will be a tie. Two great teams, now from the 47. Nebraska with the ball. Oh, and what a move Johnny Rogers put on the defensive backs as Taggy was rushed hard and then decked on the play. There's Rogers, number 20. Let's watch the dual isolation here, and you can see why Taggy was not able to hit Rogers. Rogers on the left of the screen, and here comes Hamilton on Taggy. You can see him moving in. Rogers is obviously open. And the pass is almost on target. That was Selman who put the big rush on. Second down and 10 now for Nebraska at their own 47. They lead 14 to 10 in the closing moments of the first half. Taggy. To Dam Kroger. Maury Dam Kroger, a sophomore fullback, relieving Bill Olds, is finally forced out of bounds by Steve O'Shaughnessy. And the play carries into Oklahoma territory to the 43. And the great balance of the Nebraska offense. If you're rushing their passer, you're vulnerable to the draw play. You're vulnerable to the screen. It's a first down for the Cornhuskers. As we mentioned earlier, Chris, Oklahoma's going to go ahead and force all of the time. This Nebraska offense is so consistent. They're so free of errors that you are not going to have the ball yourself unless you really pour in there and try to get after them. 
Oklahoma with 172 total yards, more than the average that Nebraska has given up thus far on the season. So from the 43, Nebraska with a first and 10. Johnny Rogers going to throw the former quarterback. There was a collision between Woody Cox and Larry Roach. And if this game were uh, played in Lincoln, Nebraska, you'd hear a lot more noise than you're hearing here in Norman, Oklahoma. Let's take a look at it again. Okay. Those are Shaughnessy going against Cox. And you can see that Roach was playing the ball, so it was a legal play. So, first pass attempted by Johnny Rogers today, incomplete, second and 10 at the 43. Pulling out all stops for victory here this afternoon. And there's Jeff Kenny. One of his favorite plays. And he moved the ball near the 40 as Bruce Deloney, number 88 for the Oklahoma defense, makes the stop at the 39, a four-yard gain. It'll be third down and six. And 428 remaining. Oklahoma can stop them here. There is time for them if they can put another drive together. They put in another back. Jeff Nordgren is in, replacing Deloney. The Oklahoma defense on third and six, anticipating a pass. Let's watch. Peggy. Wide open and couldn't hang on to the ball. Number 85, Jerry List of Bay City, Michigan. So that brings up a fourth down and six. A Nebraska punting situation with 4.06 to go in the first half. Let's watch the play again. Woody Cox going down the field. He's going against O'Shaughnessy here. He is passed to O'Shaughnessy as Terry Roach comes over. Now watch Roach will be looking back for the ball as Cox is looking back for the ball. And Cox will now stumble over Roach. But both men are playing the ball. Both fall. No foul on the play. One of the Sooner defenders shaken up, and that was John Shelley. And there is a big loss to the deep secondary of Oklahoma. We have a timeout at Owen Field in Norman, where the score is Nebraska 14, Oklahoma 10. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's either the highest tribute to the win that I've ever seen, or they perhaps will fake a field goal attempt and pass. But nevertheless, Nebraska's kicker, Sanger, is out and there's the wind which is coming across his back here's an attempt of 56 and a quarter yards Oklahoma's expecting to fake there's no one back to handle a kick if it's short but they gave it the good old college try five dollars can go a long way all the way to Munich Germany as America's finest young athletes prepare for the 1972 summer games you can help by sending five bucks to the Olympic House, Box VA, 57 Park Avenue, New York, New York. And in return, you'll receive a new colorful embroidered Olympic Games emblem for your jacket or hat. So help our young men and women as they head to Munich for the great summer games to be televised by ABC. So now from the 20-yard line, Oklahoma trailing by four. First and ten from the 20. Four minutes to go. First half. Greg Pruitt carrying on the play. Dave Mason. Helping on the tackle. Nebraska in the white jerseys on the right. He was joined by Jim Branch. I have a bit of advice for you housewives, mothers, and girlfriends. Tell your sons and husbands not to switch dials at halftime. Because we have two great bands that'll be entertaining. The Cornhusker Band and the Great Band of Oklahoma. Second down and eight from the 22. Carrying was Mildred. And Glover was right there. Glover is really a remarkable football player. He lands up right on the center. He's going on the slant charge here. He almost overran it as he tried to penetrate. And watch his lateral speed as he moves back in to tackle Mildred. Ten tackles thus far and three assists for Glover. With the ball at the 26. Less than three minutes remaining. A third and four for Oklahoma. A beautiful block screaming Mildred. Welsh through a great block. And it's a first down for Oklahoma as Blahat makes the tackle at the 39. 
And once again, the blocking of the backs and the wishbone are the key to making the offense go. Getting the blocking back on the football, but it's sort of pleasant to see, isn't it? It does a lot for the morale of the linemen when they know that the backs are blocking also. Now the ball is at the 39 of Oklahoma. Time running out in the first half. They trail 14 to 10 for the first and 10. Let's watch. Nice converging by Glover again, number 79, and uh, one other sooner when he gets up, and we see it's Bob Terrio who's shaking off his bruises to get back into the defensive unit of Nebraska. The play stopped at the 43. That's a four-yard gain, so it'll be second down and six. They're going to have to break it for bigger yardage than that if they're going to score before time runs out. Harrison set at the bottom of your screen. And lofting one out. It is number 82, Albert Chandler, beating Joe Blahock in the battle for the ball. And that play went from the 43 of Oklahoma to the 35 in Nebraska. Let's look at it again. There's the inside fake by Wiley. And the beautiful throw by Mildred. He was well covered. Minute 48 to go in the first half, 14-10, Oklahoma trailing. Good faking by Mildred, giving it to Tim Welsh. A loose ball, Nebraska recovers. Before the game, Chris, uh, we were talking about what would be the key to victory, and we right, right there we made the Rich point. Lover. Well, we made the point, really, that Oklahoma's offense was a high-risk offense because they move along the line of scrimmage, handle the ball close to the line of scrimmage, and if they fumbled the ball and lost it, more than two or three times, it would be awfully hard to beat a team as consistent and error-free as Nebraska. That's the second time Oklahoma has lost the ball by fumbles. Recovered by Rich Glover with a first and 10 from the 27. Taggy once more. Bruce Deloney, the senior defensive end. Let's see that fumble recovery again. Glover taking on Brahaney, moving back, finding the ball at crossweight. Had a good gain on the play, about eight yards. Glover pursuing, and as the ball pops free, Glover moves in to make the recovery. And to think that Glover is a junior at the University of Nebraska. 6'1", 234, great leg strength, arm strength, and remarkable speed. There's his coach, Bob Devaney. Tonight, on ABC at 8 o'clock, it's Georgia versus Georgia Tech. And a highlight at halftime will be the downtown athletic club's announcement of the Heisman Trophy winner for 1971. That's tonight on ABC. Second down, and let's call it 10, from about the 27-yard line with a minute 28 to go in the first half. Nebraska leading 14 to 10. Rogers to the far side. Cox to the near side. Dan Kroger, number 46, charging out to the 35. Not enough for the first down. Albert Qualls and Steve Aycock, the linebackers to this side of the field, make the stop at the 35-yard line. So it'll be a third down and two. A minute 22 to go, first half. Shelley is back in the defensive alignment for Oklahoma. And Chuck Fairbanks is breathing a little easier. <laughs> There is Chuck Fairbanks. Woody Cox and Rogers to the far side of the field. Third and two. And a loose ball after being denied a first down where the play was stopped. Now let's see where the officials mark it. They had called it dead, Chris, before the fumble, and he was short of the first down. All right. So in comes the kicker for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Jeff Hughes, a native of Burlington, Vermont. And he'll have the wind to his back as we have a minute to go in the first half. And let's see what players Chuck Fairbanks. He sends Joe Wiley, a fine kick returner, back deep, along with number 18, Steve O'Shaughnessy, number 19, Jeff Nordgren, and this is the one time 
You certainly do not want your kicker to outkick his coverage. Chuck Fairbanks. Doug Dumler will snap the ball to Jeff Hughes with one minute exactly on the clock here to the south end of the field. Norman, Oklahoma, about 20 miles from Oklahoma City. And it's a quiet town of 60,000, but it hasn't been quiet this past week, anticipating this battle. Here's the kick by Hughes. The punt is on its way. Joe Wiley, a junior. Couldn't make his moves and is stopped at the 22. 51 seconds left in the first half as Dick Rupert, the left guard, made the tackle. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds for local station identification. Don't forget, coming up after 51 seconds on the clock have elapsed, two great bands and the two universities will perform. You'll enjoy it. Mildred calls his own number. And Lahak comes up to make the stop. John Atkins joined Lahak on the play at the 27-yard line. So it'll now be a second down and five. And we look at the clock. It's stopped with 33 seconds to go, bud. And Oklahoma has just used their first time out. They'll have two remaining, but... And it's awfully hard, Chris, with this offense to break the long gainer. It's not a good come-from-behind offense because you can give teams short yardage on running plays. Tomorrow on ABC, NBA professional basketball premieres. That's at 2 Eastern time as the Baltimore Bullets take on the Atlanta Hawks. That's tomorrow here on ABC. Then Saturday, an exciting football doubleheader. Army-Navy from Philadelphia at 1 Eastern time. Then a battle of the unbeatens, Auburn and Alabama from Birmingham. That game starts at 4 p.m. And, Bud, we look forward to heading for Birmingham to cover that one as number three-ranked Alabama, number five-ranked Auburn. And another Heisman Trophy uh, contender, Pat Sullivan, will be pitching to All-American Terry Beasley. And Johnny Musso, of course, will be uh, carrying the ball for the Crimson Tide. And on the basketball doubleheader, we look forward to the commentary of Hall of Fame basketball great, formerly the Boston Celtics, Bill Russell. Jack Mildren, number 11, calling signals now with a second down and five from his own 27-yard line, 33 seconds to go, first half, trailing 14 to 10. Joe Wiley, number 22, coming up near a first down. 29 seconds, as you see. And when I was talking earlier there, Chris, if the defense can say, give them eight, give them 10 on a running play, and if you're willing to give them that kind of yardage, it's very easy to close on any kind of ball carrying plays. Clock running, first down play. Mildred looking to throw. Loops one out. It's coming in the area of Harrison. He has it. Harrison, as a helmet goes shooting out, the defender, number 24, Bill Cush, lost the helmet, and the play goes to the 24 yard line of Nebraska. Let's look at it again. There's a great inside running fake here. Harrison just drifting down the field, then turning it on. Pope went back, didn't quite see the ball. Overran it. That's Kosh overrunning it. First and ten with the clock running, and there is a touchdown. Oklahoma, John Harrison. I wouldn't believe that, Chris. 78 yards, four plays, showing you the explosiveness of the wishbone offense. And Jack Mildren coming into this game had only completed 22 of 45 passes, but he ripped. Nebraska with two passes in particular to take the lead. 16-14, what a game. Five seconds left as we'll have the try for the point by John Carroll. It's up and it's good. But striking with dramatic suddenness. Because uh, normally you expect the defense will ignore the running fake when there's very few seconds left on the clock. Mildred must make the running fake. Let's take a look at the touchdown pass again. We'll have it up here, hopefully, in just a moment. Number 12, this is Harrison going downfield, and he clearly beats Kosh here. Mildred, after the running fake, put it perfectly on target. Mildred is four of six for this afternoon, and of course, he was 22 of 45 going into the game. 
you've got to say he's a very good passer. Well, it's his eighth touchdown pass of the year, and that is an incredible average of the completions. He's an academic All-American. As we have five seconds left on the clock, John Carroll's kick. He tried to make it go 10 yards in an onside attempt. It went 10, but we have Nebraska's Dick Rupert, it appears, over the ball to retain it for the Cornhuskers, who now trail by three as we look at Jack Mildred. And I think we've got a uh, very good man on the clock. This is only one second picked off after the ball was touched. This is the first time all year that Nebraska has been behind the nation's number one ranked team. They're now near midfield with a first and ten. As Taggy wants to get a touchdown, he throws it. Really reared back and let go. Picked it for Johnny Rogers. Delirious hysterical Sooner fans as we look at the Sooner Schooner with two identical Shetland ponies named Boomer and Sooner pulling it across the tartan turf here on a very colorful afternoon and one which we hope you're enjoying and adding to your Thanksgiving day. A great halftime of entertainment coming up. The score here at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma is Oklahoma 17, Nebraska 14. This is Jewel. The Cornhusker marching band is coming onto the field right now as the halftime has reached us with Oklahoma out in front 17 to 14 the one great football game here on Thanksgiving Day. Right now the Cornhusker band coming on with the Perth of the Blues as the theme song. The feature corner is Miss Diane Tangman we are watching right now. 188 marching men under the direction of Professor Jack R. Snyder. This is a medley of blues tunes, embracing something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. After the birth of the Blues, we'll have that great WC Handy number, the St. Louis Blues, has sold more records than perhaps any other popular or serious piece of music down through the years. And of course, it's, a, it's an oldie, but one that we always get a kick out of hearing, especially when played by one of the outstanding university fans. Here's the St. Louis Blues. And we thank you, the card section, with our salute to ABC. And really, it's a fantastic three days of our sports spectacular here. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on ABC. And we hope you're with us during this holiday weekend. Oscar marching band playing the St. Louis Blues. And now a little more modern updating of blues tunes. One that the current generation gets a real kick out of, and that's the Swinging Shepherd Blues.
And now the Cornhusker marching band will move into a number borrowed from New Orleans. And uh, I'm sure you don't need anybody to tell you that this is going to be the Basin Street Blues. here of course that ABC will be in New Orleans on New Year's Day for some real Basin Street Blues in the game in the Sugar Bowl game and there you see the Sugar Bowl being put up in the card section and that should be quite a contest between Oklahoma leading Nebraska in this game 17 to 14 at halftime and Auburn President. Well, he'd have quite a cabinet, too, with Mildred and the rest of them. Well, that was the Basin Street Blues. And now, when um, we move into Gershwin's number, we hear Rhapsody in Blue. And there is Miss Diane Tagman, the solo twirler of the University of Nebraska Cornhusker Marching Band. Rhapsody in Blue. And a band in the form of a grand piano. <laughs> Don't touch your set. It's just a reflection off a horn. It's a roast turkey that we're looking at up in the card section. The Nebraska-Oklahoma game is being brought to you by Tijuana Smalls. Ten small cigars, and you don't have to inhale them to like them. By Texaco and the many thousands of Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. Trust Texaco to have the right gasoline for your car. By State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you drive, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. Well, as the concluding number, naturally, Bye Bye Blues. And as the Cornhusker marching band leaves the field, let's say a word more about Nebraska. The Nebraska team, which you are watching, represents the Lincoln campuses of the University of Nebraska. More than 21,000 students are enrolled this year at Nebraska State University and Land Grant College. In 1869, the legislature of the New Prairie State chartered this institution. A few years after its founding, NU launched the first program of graduate study in any public institution west of the Mississippi River. And soon after the turn of the century, the University of Nebraska was invited to join the Association of American Universities. This organization now numbers 48 member schools, which have been selected for membership on the basis of high-quality faculty. This, then, is the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, one of the great educational institutions of mid-America.
artist, apparently, uh, sketching this great scene here today. And certainly it is a, a scene, a, a classic football game. And we have seen, really, a great 30 minutes, and we anticipate another great 30 minutes. In case you joined us late, and I hope you did. Oklahoma has come from behind to lead Nebraska 17 to 14, and that's what he was sketching. Mr. Gene Thrillkill, in his first year as director of the Pride of Oklahoma, directing the 144 students in the University of Oklahoma Pride of Oklahoma Band. And the number being played is New World Coming. This is a love and peace halftime performance. The blueprint for tomorrow, full of promises and hopes for a better society. And the selections to be heard will all have that theme around them. Let's listen. Now in block formation. It's the latest rock and jazz selections. It's the now sound that's of the Oklahoma band. A bit of a departure, a streamlining, a, a modernization, if you will, of bands. So with the jazz rock selection, we move on to Love and Peace. Jeannie Tyler and Michelle Perry is the other. Believe it or not, those are machetes. Big knives. After the selection of Love and Peace, the man marches to a block formation and a new world coming. will perform a dance routine to a selection made popular by the fifth dimension. People just got to be free. Utilizing many moves of the popular dances of the day, the band shows why their routines have been accepted so enthusiastically by the Oklahoma fans. So people just got to be free. Jeannie Tyler, the West, Michelle Perry. That's Michelle on the right, Jeannie on the left. Now I'll tell you, they worked out here yesterday afternoon for about two and a half hours, much longer than either of the football teams. <laughs>
He will just got to be free. The selection by University of Oklahoma marching band called the Pride of Oklahoma. Now the battle hymn of the Republic is heard softly as the band performs a halftime drill. As the music grows in intensity, the strains of New World Coming and United We Stand will be heard in the high brass as the low brass maintains the strains of battle hymn. And then the band will move to the sidelines as the final strains of the selection are heard. So we recognize the popular rhythm of Save the Country by the entire band. This is quite a number. Pride of Oklahoma, marching band of the University of Oklahoma under the direction of Mr. Gene Tailfield. As the Sooners come out onto the field, let's say a word about the University of Oklahoma. Academic excellence is a proud tradition at the University of Oklahoma. The university ranks third among state-supported colleges in production of Rhodes Scholars. The University of Oklahoma Medical Center in Oklahoma City not only trains physicians to meet the ever-increasing demand for doctors, leads the way in medical research. The university operates the Oklahoma Center for Continuing Education, one of America's foremost adult education centers. The University of Oklahoma Research Institute shares the talent and facilities of the university and its personnel with government and business by coordinating research efforts. Its facilities, its faculty, its students, its alumni, and its tradition make the University of Oklahoma one of the nation's finest centers of higher education. Halftime and music are over, and coming up next, the second half of the score here at Owen Field is Oklahoma 17, Nebraska 14. What you said. Nebraska. A record-breaking crowd of 63,385. Most ever to see a game here in Norman, Oklahoma. Along with you, look at number 20, Johnny Rogers, who has scored one touchdown for Nebraska on a punt return of 72 yards, joined by Jeff Kenny Deep as Nebraska has chosen to defend the goal to the left here at the start of the third quarter, so they'll have the wind to their back during the fourth quarter. So the kick by Oklahoma's John Carroll, with the wind aiding, goes right through the end zone. And let's look at the two pass plays that set up the Oklahoma touchdown. They got the ball with only 50 seconds remaining on the clock. This is Harrison, Oklahoma's wide receiver. Milgren had made a good inside running fake. It's a long ball, overrun just slightly by Bill Kosh of Nebraska. Harrison making the catch. 78 yards in four plays to take the lead. Now Nebraska with Jerry Taggy from their own 20. First and 10. It goes to Kenny, a bruising runner. And that's what we mean. It's the first time that they've popped anything off the I formation all afternoon. Let's look at the touchdown that put gave Oklahoma the lead just before the half. This is Harrison, a little inside fake. Again, a great running fake by Mildren. And then an absolutely on-target pass. Again, beating Kosh. Harrison scoring to give Oklahoma the lead. 22-yard gain. It's first and 10 around the 42 of Nebraska. A spread formation with a single setback. First down. Maggie. A very sure tackle. Put on by Mark Driscoll, number 59 from Ponca City, Oklahoma. And the first half statistics way in favor of Oklahoma. 312 total yards to 91. Nebraska had been averaging 220 yards a half. So they're way below it, 120 some below their normal offensive output. The time of possession in favor of Oklahoma. But the two Oklahoma fumbles recovered by Nebraska have changed the game and kept it very, very close. Second down and 12, let's call it. And there is Mr. Kenny again. The number one rusher for Nebraska. 
brings it up to the 49 and three quarters of Oklahoma. Don't forget at the end of this game, we'll present the Chevrolet Outstanding Offensive and Defensive Players of the Game. This award represents a $1,000 scholarship to the school scholarship fund on behalf of the winning player. Bob Devaney, Chris, before the game, thought Oklahoma defense the eye formation awfully well, and he didn't think they'd run much inside. And not having done so in the first half, they're coming with it in the second. Third down and three now at midfield, and an early move by the left guard, number 77, Dick Rupert of Los Angeles, California. Nebraska is one of the most error-free college football teams I have ever seen. That's the first mistake that they have made today. They have not fumbled, no interception, no penalties until right now. All right, so the ball uh, comes back to five yards. The referee, Vance Carlson. In the backfield now, five backs for the Oklahoma defense. Roach, Nordgren, Shelley, Pope, and O'Shaughnessy. As we have a third down and eight. And the ball at about the 45 of Nebraska. Slot eye, taggy. Pass blocking fine, but not from behind, however. Number 88, Delaney was the first to get there. Then he's joined by Lucius Selman, a sophomore, number 98. So it brings up a fourth down at the 38 of Nebraska following a seven-yard loss. Fourth down and 15 with Oklahoma leading 17-14. And a tough punt into the strong wind coming from the right of the screen. Jeff Hughes all set. Back deep is John Shelley. Shelley looking at the ball. It's in the area of the 30. Now going between the 25 and 30. Watch closely by the Nebraska folks. Doug Dumbler, he snapped the ball to Hughes, covered it, and it's down at the 29-yard line. So now we look at Oklahoma's front. Chandler, Urum, Emmert, Rahaney, Jones, Jensen, and Harrison. Harrison, who's caught the last touchdown pass, is thrown by Jack Mildren as number 12. There you see the backfield. Bell, 35, is in, replacing Wiley. Pruitt is number 30. Crosswhite is number 17. So from the 29, here are the Sooners. John Harrison to the near side of the field. And Pruitt hasn't been able to get away yet today. Number 30. The attention that Nebraska is giving Pruitt, however, is making it a little easier for the other Oklahoma backs to run. Pruitt has had seven carries now for 26 yards. His average going into the game was 9.5. He's just barely getting half of that right now. Nebraska scored first on a 72-yard punt return by Johnny Rogers. Then Oklahoma with a field goal. It's been nip and tuck. Second and seven from the 32. And Leon Crosswhite stopped by guess who? Let's take a look at him. And it's again Rick Glover. This is the counterplay. Supposed to go by him. His slant was to the right side, but he recovered again, knocking Brahaney back and was right on the ball. The match today, matching the country's two best teams, struggle for supremacy. Third and four for Oklahoma. And Mildred, the real star for Oklahoma, has carried it across the 42 for a first down. And that quarterback counterplay truly puts the pressure on Glover, the middle guard. If you don't move with the first fake of the backfield playing middle guard, uh, they're apt to cut you off all the time. And if you do, the quarterback can get back around you quicker than anyone else in the backfield. He's three and a half, four yards closer. The nation's number one offense with the ball. Oklahoma going against the nation's number one defense, Nebraska. First and ten from the 42. And Mildren again steps it up and loses the ball the third. Error by the Oklahoma defense as John Atkins knocked it loose. And number 25, Dave Mason. And number 18, Jim Anderson were there, but Mason covered it. And Bud, this was one of the points you brought out earlier, that they could not afford to fumble it away. I didn't think, Chris, if they lost the ball more than three times, they could win. Our Thanksgiving Day coverage of the game of the year between Nebraska and Oklahoma continues after this message. Yes, two touchdowns by Nebraska's Johnny Rogers, one each. Jeff Kenny one. Oklahoma has the lead, 17-14, with about 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Nebraska recovered a fumble, first and 10 at the 47, and Jeff Kenny spins into Oklahoma territory to the 47. Hit behind the line. Kenny is a man of great balance. He was able to slide right through the first couple of tackles. 
There you see the backfield. Taggy 14, Kenny 35, Olds 44, and Johnny Rogers 20. Cox and Rogers, 32 and 20, come to the near side of the field. In the slot is Rogers, number 20, on second and four from the Oklahoma 47. Kenny, tough man to stop. Gets about five yards and an apparent first down as Deloney makes the tackle. First and ten for the Cornhuskers. The Cornhuskers are unbeaten in 29 games. Ranked number one in the nation. Oklahoma has not lost in 15 games, and the last loss was to Nebraska. There you see three fumbles losing them, Oklahoma. First and 10 from the 42, Nebraska. Taggy for about three yards as Hamilton comes in to make the play, joined by 97, Derlin Moore. As college football's 103rd season nears its end, athletes in many exciting winter sports are starting to compete. Your favorite college probably has hockey, swimming, wrestling, and basketball. Plan to follow some of the NCAA action in your area during the months ahead. Second down and seven now with the ball at the 39. Raheem. Old, number 44, carrying on the play as Dumbler snapped the ball to Taggy. Mark Driscoll comes in on Olds, number 44 and White, joined by Deloney. And the play is at the 35, a gain of four, so it's going to be third down and three. Lots of Nebraska fans here today as we have a record-breaking crowd of 63,385. Rogers is flanked to the far side. Cox is split to the near side with Kenny in the slot. Single setback. Taggy gets the first down and more. Jerry Taggy. Moving his way down inside the five as Kenneth Pope forced him out of bounds. And Nebraska, too, can run the option play. Taggy cutting upfield as Mildred does off the wishbone option and putting Nebraska in scoring position. Let's take a look at it again. Spread formation. Kenny is the wing back. Kenny making a good block right there. Which set up the run. All right, back live. A first and goal for... The Cornhuskers at the three of Oklahoma. Kenny and Olds with the setback. Look at that move. Jeff Kenny pulling away from everyone for a three-yard touchdown romp. And now it is 20 to 17 as Nebraska has regained the lead here in the third quarter. Let's watch Kenny again. It doesn't look like there's any daylight at all. But he finds that crease as Olds makes a beautiful block for him. Gets the safety man and drives right over him, keeping his feet for the touchdown. Here, let's watch it again from the ground level camera. Great block by Olds. There's that hit and spin and Kinney in the end zone. Rich Sanger will try for the point after with Taggy holding the kick is good. A timeout at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, an overcast afternoon where the score is Nebraska 21, Oklahoma 17. Back again at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, where the Cornhuskers are meeting the Sooners with 8.54 to go. In the third quarter, it's 21-17 as the Cornhuskers went 53 yards in six plays. And now we'll kick into the wind to Joe Wiley, 22, or Greg Pruitt. Pruitt on the far side. And they'll spin kick it into the wind rather than hanging up in the air short and giving those speed men a chance to make a fine run back. Here is Sanger moving to the ball. It's hanging in the air, coming up short of the two great run-back artists. Number 17 for Oklahoma, Cross White, the fullback, brings it out to about the 27-yard line, where the Sooners now trailing after taking the lead and forcing Nebraska to be behind for the first time this year, have the ball. Jack Mildred out on the field. And the fumble problem is the key for problem for Oklahoma's offense. They're moving the ball very well, but the three fumbles that they have lost have turned the ball over to Nebraska and kept them from dominating the game offensively. Jerry Taggy on the phones for Nebraska. Meanwhile, out on the field, Jack Milton for Oklahoma with the 27 first down and cross white. Carries the ball across the 30. Nebraska led at the end of the first quarter, 7-3, to three, on a 72-yard punt returned by Johnny Rogers. Oklahoma kicked a 30-yard field goal, John Carroll, and then... Jeff Kenny scored for Nebraska 
capping a 54-yard drive, but uh, Oklahoma came right back going 80 yards in 13 plays to make it 14-10. Then Oklahoma scored again. Milgram to Harrison to lead at halftime, 17-14. Now we have a second down and seven. Pruitt carrying on the play. And they're certainly giving Pruitt no daylight at all. And Bud mentioned they, and speaking of they, it's the Nebraska group, which includes 57 Atkins, 75 Jacobson, 45 Terrio, Glover 79, 51 Branch, Jansen 55, Harper 81, Blayhawk 27, 25 Mason, Cush 24, and Anderson 18. They're set now as Oklahoma, Oklahoma has a third down and four. The ball between the 30 and 35, and Mildred, Willie Harper. Pinches in from his right defensive end position. And in case of help, Jim Branch, number 51, was there too. So it's a punting situation. Nebraska correctly anticipating Oklahoma would pass. Harper starting in, pausing, then turning it on. Getting back together with Rigetti of Nebraska. Oklahoma getting the big loss and being forced to punt. So it's a fourth down and 16. The line of the scrimmage or the snap will come from the 22 as Johnny, Johnny uh, Rogers is deep. Joe Wiley's kick sailing high. Rogers looks at it. Couldn't get even one step as the coverage was good and included Tom Brahaney, the All-American center, number 54, and Dean Unro, number 60. Tonight at 8 Eastern time, Georgia, Georgia Tech from Atlanta, Georgia. Keith Jackson, Lee Grosscupper there, waiting to bring you that game. And at halftime of this event, the Downtown Athletic Club of New York will make its annual announcement of the Heisman Trophy winner. Nebraska at their own 39, first and 10. Dam Kroger, Maury Dam Kroger, number 46, who was alternated fullback with Bill Oles, carried on the play. And his advance is out to the 44 for five. Second and five with Nebraska leading 21 17, 644 to go in the third quarter. And they keep picking, picking up that big yardage on first down, which makes it very difficult to defense them and stop them. Cox and Rogers are to the far side. And that's what Bud Wilkinson was referring to as Nebraska moves closer to midfield. Jeff Kenny carrying the ball this time up to about the 49 and very close, but apparently not close enough for a measurement. Yes, now the official indicates that he would like a measurement, and the head linesman comes in. Wendell Winkler and his crew. First down. Nebraska at the 49, their own 49. And Nebraska's use of the high slot in this half has picked up their offense tremendously. Oklahoma's defense has not been able to contend nearly as well with the high slot inside running as they have with the rest of the Nebraska attack. Nebraska sends Woody Cox and Rogers to this side of the field or the wide side from their own 49 first down. They lead 21-17. Kenny and Dam Kroger are the setbacks. Kenny going wild here in the second half. Mark Driscoll making the stop on Jeff Kenny from McCook, Nebraska, number 35. And the Cornhuskers showing their might have moved to the 36 of Oklahoma, bud. That extra step of speed, John Shelley was coming up on a perfect inside angle. Kenny saw him coming, just turned on that little extra burst and was able to break right past him. Jeff Kenny, 5.8 average, 92 total yards on 16 carries. He's number 35. First down from the Oklahoma 36. What a catch by Johnny Rogers. Keith Pope covering on the play as Rogers tried to juke and get more yardage, but the completion moves Nebraska to the Oklahoma 16, a gain of 20 yards. Let's watch Rogers as he's breaking down the field in the outside pattern. Taggy was running when he threw that ball, and he laid it right on target. This drive started at the 39 of Nebraska. They now are at the Oklahoma 16. Rogers to the far side on a wide slot position. Just inside the split end, Woody Cox. <laughs> Jeff Kenny, 59 in the red jersey is Mark Driscoll, and 43 is Steve Acock. Two Oklahoma linebackers, no gain. 
Second and ten from the 16. And the pressure is really on the Oklahoma defense. Percentage-wise, they've done a great job against Nebraska, holding them to 91 yards in the first half. But the Cornhuskers have straightened up their blocking assignments. They're using this eye setup and able to move much better here in the second half. Second down and ten. Taggy, receivers covered. Mark Driscoll making the tackle at about the 11-yard line. Another five-yard pickup as they just turn it out. And a great move by Taggy. As you said, Chris, everyone was covered. Instead of hesitating and taking a loss, he was able to turn on the speed and move inside of Day, picking up that five-yard gain instead of getting about a four-yard loss. Rusty Anderson, number 89, who goes to the far side as a split end may have brought in a play. It's a double wing formation on third and five at the 11 of Oklahoma. Here's the pass. Johnny Rogers, short of the Oklahoma goal line. John Shelley, number 33 in the dark jersey. You've got to respect Rogers deep. And when you respect him deep, it's very easy for him to get open short. Look at him breaking to the outside here as he made the deep fake downfield. Nebraska trying to cap a 61-yard drive as they now have a first and goal at the half-yard spot. It darkens here in Norman, Oklahoma, getting uh, more overcast as Anderson goes to the left. Kenny and Graham Kroger are the setbacks, and Taggy tries to go in. To credit the whole middle of the Oklahoma defense, including Raymond Hamilton. A first down that close to the goal line, Chris. Many coaches don't believe there's any point in taking a chance on handing the ball to anyone else. The quarterback ought to be able to get it over from the first down on the one-yard line. Jerry Taggy, 215-pound, 6-foot-2-inch quarterback from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Second and goal from the half. But Jeff Kenny goes in. So Jeff Kenny has scored the last two touchdowns for Nebraska. Going in from the half-yard spot. And the Cornhuskers take a 10-point lead, 27 to 17. Kenny now with 14 touchdowns for the year. Taggy doing a good job and the line doing a good job. He took a long, long time calling the snap count down there. The defense is ready to go in the longer you make them freeze in position, and your men know when the ball is going to be snapped, the less likelihood there is that they can get off on the mark with you. 61-yard drive, nine plays. Rich Sanger trying for the point after. Taggy holding. It's good. Three minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play as the game of the year in college football being seen here on ABC with time out to score. Nebraska 28, Oklahoma 17. Ranked team Oklahoma as a result of another tough touchdown by Jeff Kenny as he scored two in about five minutes with 3.38 to go in the third quarter. 28-17, Nebraska leading. Rich Sanger has the ball teed on the 40. Kicking into the wind and deep we have Greg Pruitt, number 30, and Joe Wiley, number 22. Here's the kick, short again. Crosswhite looking at it, but stepping forward is number 40 for Oklahoma, Steve Dodd of Lindsay, Oklahoma. He is a sophomore. So it will be Oklahoma trying to move the ball, which they must at this point of the game from about their own 28. NBA basketball premieres on ABC tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time as the Baltimore Bullets take on the Atlanta Hawks from Atlanta, Georgia. And appearing for the first time as a an expert commentator on our professional games of the week, Bill Russell. Jack Mildred stepping forward from his own 28. 45 is Terrio. And you see Glover again, number 79. Oklahoma faking to prove it here. There's Glover driving Brahaney back, freeing himself from Brahaney. There's Pruitt coming in, trying to block him, and he still moves away from Pruitt out to Mildred. He is some football player. Harrison 12. The split end comes to the near side of the field on second and five for Oklahoma from their own 33. Glover says, oh no, to Tim Welsh, number 45. Glover then joined by 250 pound Larry Jacobson, winner of the Outland Trophy, is the outstanding lineman of the year, number 75. 
I don't recall Chris ever seeing a middle guard that so dominates the offensive team as Glover. We had him against Colorado, and he played a magnificent game. And Rahaney is the All-American center, and he's handling Rahaney most of the time, getting through one or two blockers moving to the ball. Just beyond the 33, it's a third down and five for the Sooners, 2.29 to go in the third quarter. They trail by 11. And here is a pass thrown, and it is complete to John Harrison. Harrison trying to get away, can't. But Oklahoma has moved to the 15 of Nebraska. A pass thrown by John Harrison to Albert Chandler, number 82. Let's take a look at it again. Harrison is the wide receiver, is split in. Here he is coming back. The fake of the play was to the left of the screen. There's the lateral as he picked it off. Instead of having Pruitt pick it off, he was rushed. Chandler was open on the play. The ball a little underthrown, but Oklahoma has the first down. A 41-yard play to the 16 of Nebraska. First down. The exciting wishbone. Milden. Look at him pick his way between folks. Quick feet. Bob Terrio, 45, stopped him just inside the 10 at the 8. It's an 8-yard move, though, by Mildred, number 11, as the Oklahoma fans feel that he was trying to twist his ankle. There's the yarding situ yardage situation, bud. Oklahoma getting very close to 400 yards. Nebraska having picked up most of their yardage here in the second half which is unheard of, that much yardage against Nebraska. Second and two, Mildred, his own number again, and it appears that he has the first down. First and goal to go, Oklahoma. Larry Jacobson, number 75, and 24, Bill Cush on the tackle. Mildred now has gained 101 yards rushing on 23 carries. He has scored one touchdown. He has thrown a touchdown to Harrison. So now it is first and goal with a minute five to go in the third quarter. The ball at the three. No gain. Jacobson. Oh, he's beginning to show why he's an All-American, number 75 in white, bud. He just kind of overpowered Tim Welch. The fake was to Welch, and uh, he went in to try to hit Jacobson, but he didn't quite get far enough outside of him to cut him to the inside so that Mildred could keep going wide. Clock running as you see. Nebraska leading 28 to 17 after trailing in the ball game 21 to 17 at halftime. Touchdown Jack Mildred. So the Boomer Sooners go marching from their own 28. A 72 yard drive in seven plays and what an exciting game but Anytime they ring that scoreboard the way these two teams do, it's excitement all the way. It reminds me, Chris, in 1950 we played Nebraska here. We had Billy Vessels, they had Bobby Reynolds, and that score was 49-35. Well, we're approaching that now because we have 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the kick by Carroll is up and good. A record-breaking crowd here. The last bigger crowd was in 1957, but when you were the coach, and it was Notre Dame that day that stopped your 47-game winning streak. I remember the afternoon very well. It was gray and overcast, almost like this one. Let's watch the touchdown again. You can watch the blocking here of the wishbone backs as they cut the pursuit down, enabling Mildren to move into the end zone for the touchdown. Let's take a look at it again from another angle. There go those fine blocks. Bell, Welch, and Mildren finding the end zone. Capping a 72-yard drive in seven plays. We have Rogers to the near side and Kenny, 35 opposite, awaiting John Carroll's kick for Oklahoma. 28-24 is the score. 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Lots of time for either team as Rogers. It goes right through. But it'll come out to the 20-yard line. A touchback. December 11th on ABC, College Division Bowl games. The Boardwalk Bowl, CW Post versus Delaware. And the Grantland Rice Bowl, McNeese State versus East Tennessee State. The Pioneer Bowl, Eastern Michigan versus Louisiana Tech. And the Camellia Bowl, Boise State versus Chico State. So check your local listings for time and station. Now the powerful and number one ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. First and 10 at their own 20. 
their super engineer and quarterback Jerry Taggy has the ball pitches it to the deep man Kenny and Kenny it's that extra four mm -hmm. yards he gets Chris after the ordinary back would be down that enables Nebraska to dominate ball possession against Missouri they kept the ball 47 out of the 60 minutes which is the most unbelievable statistic I've ever heard it was a gain of seven yards and uh, Kenny carried 230 pound Lucius Selman on his way at the end of the third quarter here at Owen Field in Norman Oklahoma where the temperature is 47 degrees the score Nebraska 28 Oklahoma 24. And now we await the start of the fourth and final quarter in the game to, to decide number one in the nation. Nebraska leading 28-24. They trailed at halftime 17-14. They have bounced back. Oklahoma has just scored on a 72-yard drive. And now it's second and three for Nebraska at their own 27. First snap, fourth quarter. Taggy faking a handoff faking with one pump of the throwing arm and then carrying to the 31 where Mike Strzok makes the tackle. The statistics, uh, Oklahoma clearly in the lead, 401 total yards to 237 for Nebraska. The statistic that is vital in this game is that Oklahoma has lost three fumbles. Nebraska has not made a turnover either by fumble or an interception. It's a first and 10 now for Nebraska at their own 31. <laughs> gives you an idea of just how tough Kenny is and the team that is being tested now is the Oklahoma defensive unit because they have to get that ball for their offensive team and here in the second half bud Nebraska has, has sort of punctured them they've made 146 yards in the third quarter when they made only 91 yards in the entire first half second down and seven for Nebraska taggy is 1420 is Johnny Rogers 85 is list to the far side Cox 32 to the near side Oh, here's Johnny Rogers coming the opposite way. There's that blinding speed out of bounds at midfield on a 16 yard gain. Roach forcing Rogers, number 20 out of bounds. Rogers with 16 touchdowns this year, one here today on a 72 yard punt return. The leverage man has got to get as deep as the ball. The Oklahoma end is in too tight. Rogers is out around clean, picks up the wall of blockers. And the Nebraska offense in this, the second half, has come to life. Right on the midfield stripe. Snapping the ball would be Doug Dumbler, number 54. Taggy right behind him. First down. Getting it away at the last moment to Jeff Kenny. Number 98. Grabbing that ball. Lucius Selman as Larry Roach comes in defensively for Oklahoma. And the Sooner fans felt the ball should go elsewhere. With it at the 48, it's second and eight. Kenny certainly got it put away quickly, Chris. Uh, he was hit just about two steps after he caught the lateral. And I've never seen such a last-minute pitch to him from Taggy. Cox goes to the far side along with 20. Rogers on second down and eight from the Oklahoma 48. Olds is the fullback. Kenny behind him. The fake is to Kenny, and the defense took it. Here's Taggy. Taggy still trying. Ooh. And once again, Oklahoma loses leverage rushing the passer. They had him, but Taggy had a little bit more speed than Day coming in. Danny Mullen, number 58, in on the play. Along with Mark Driscoll. As now the ball is at the 40 after an eight yard gain. Let's see, we're just short of a first down, third down in inches. And look at the yards gained by Kenny, the two quarterbacks going stride for stride on the rushing yardage. Third and in inches, slot eye. <laughs> Jeff Kenny getting yards. Inside the 25 of Oklahoma, Driscoll making another tackle. 
Watch Kinney again. Short yardage. It's always good at eight to go out wide. You know that the defense is going to be converging to the inside. They've got everybody knocked down inside. Kinney picks up the first down very easily, and the Nebraska offense continues here in the second half to dominate the Oklahoma defense. A 16-yard run by Kenny. Now the ball at the 24 of Oklahoma, first and 10. Nebraska leading 28-24. 12 minutes left in the ball game. Hiding of the ball, it's loose, and Oklahoma recovers. Lucius Selman recovers the ball. That's the second mistake that Nebraska's made. They jumped offside once. Now they have fumbled it. But that fumble was a big one. Wasn't Oklahoma it? has the ball, and they're only four points behind. And we have 11 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the ball game. A timeout at Owen Field in Norman with a score. Nebraska 28, Oklahoma 24. Lucius Selman has recovered a Nebraska fumble. As a result, the Sooners, who are trailing by four points with 11.47 to go in the ball game, have it at the 31 first down. Mildred, who scored the last Oklahoma touchdown. Number 11 at quarterback. And Jack Mildred is moving. John Atkins went right along with him, finally stops him near the 41. Let's see if it's enough yardage. That's Lucius Salmon, number 98, who made that fumble recovery for Oklahoma. Nebraska seemed to be moving toward another, relentlessly moving toward a touchdown. That was Danny Mullen alongside him on the Oklahoma bench with the ball at the 41. It's second down and less than a yard. Rich Glover again and on Mildren. But that uh, quarterback counter will straighten Glover up a little bit. He won't be able to pursue quite so fast with the normal wishbone pattern moving to the outside. You just joined us. Nebraska led at the end of the first quarter, 7-3. to three. They trailed at half time, 17-14. At the end of the third quarter, they led 28-24. That's the score now with Oklahoma getting a first and 10 at their own 45. And number 45, Tim Welsh, 190-pounder from Bowie, Texas, moves near midfield. Next February, the United States gets its first chance to host the World University Winter Games. Some 500 college athletes from 25 countries will be competing in Plattsburgh and beautiful Lake Placid, New York for international honors in hockey, skating, and skiing. Second down and five for Oklahoma near midfield. the first opportunity to see the speed of Greg Pruitt. What a play, bud. There's the counter option. Let's watch it again. Mildred finally got him to close on him where he could get the ball out to Pruitt for the first time this afternoon. Let's look at it again. Here's Pruitt, a little counter step. Mildred closed the defense, and when he gets it, he can turn it on just like Johnny Rogers. Greg Pruitt. His biggest day rushing this year was 294 yards in a game, and as you saw, he has fantastic acceleration. So at the 33 of Nebraska now, following the 17-yard game, Mildred keeps, and Jacobson is on top of him. And on the bottom, he had some help, too, from 51, Jim Branch of Chicago, Illinois. A gain of two to the 31, second down and eight. Mildred, four of six completions for one touchdown, 67 percent, 122 yards. He's rushed it 27 times, 117 yards, and he has scored a touchdown. In fact, he scored two. Second and eight. And Welsh finds the toughness of the Nebraska defense. And with time running out, we're getting in those critical situations. We've got third down and a long five. Yes, it is a long five. It's more like six. Yes, it is. <laughs> Welsh playing the fullback position for Oklahoma as a result crosswise. Got some bruises early. He's been in and out of the lineup. We have Harrison to the near side on third and five. Mildred. And it's Welsh. Battles, but is short about a yard and a half of the first down, bringing up fourth down. Jim Branch on the tackle. And now listen to the 
coaches in the stands. The this fans. Time there's going to be no disagreement between the coaches on the bench and the coaches in the stands. Oklahoma's going to go for it. They need uh, almost two yards. 8.51 to go in the ball game as Oklahoma trails by four. The wishbone offense with Harrison split at the bottom of your screen, number 12. Got to go wide, I think. And there's the first down by the bread and butter man, Jack Mildren. That was a good idea to come back with the next related play to the one that breaks for long yardage. That was the counter option. Mildren, instead of pitching to Pruitt, felt that they would be drifting to cover Pruitt, kept it himself for the first down. And he moves it to the 21-yard line. The Abilene, Texas native, senior Jack Mildren. There you see the Nebraska defense, which includes Atkins, Jacobson, Terrio, Glover, Branch, Jansen, Harper up front. Mason, Cush, Blayhawk, and Anderson in the secondary. And up front, they were tough on Welsh. Number 45. Very little gain, as you see the clock running. 28-24, Oklahoma has to penetrate the Nebraska end zone. Oklahoma with 61 rushes for 280 yards. Coming into this game, the average 481 yards. Now it's a second down and nine. And Pruitt. He doesn't have an opportunity to get his head down and go. He's usually in an upright position when he runs into those big Nebraska defenders. Mason, however, the monster man, joined Jacobson on the tackle at about the 17-yard line. And you keep wondering, when is Oklahoma going to throw it? Because the defense stays up very tight against this powerful running attack. Through it, 10 carries, 49 yards. He's in the wishbone on the right-hand side, number 30, of the two deep men. Third and six. And knocked away in a beautiful play. Number 18, Jim Anderson, a senior from Green Bay. It was intended for Albert Chandler. The Chandler was open. Milton underthrew it slightly. Fourth down and six for Oklahoma with seven minutes, 14 seconds to go. Nebraska leading 28-24. And what play do you call here, Chris? <laughs> well... You're the coach, bud. <laughs> you did so well here for so many years. Well, it's going to be a running fake. Uh, I believe that we may run the basic option or a pass off the fake. They need six yards. Mildren busting one out here to a man who's open. It's a touchdown. Oklahoma leads. plays and Jack Milton has thrown his second touchdown pass to Harrison John Harrison also from Abilene Texas so the Abilene boys really shot him down that time and we have 710 to go and now we have Carroll trying for the point after an Oklahoma ups the count they have a 31 to 28 margin at this moment the game for number one We'll continue here on ABC in a moment. The score, Oklahoma 31, Nebraska 28. 35 is Jeff Kenny on the far side. Johnny Rogers for Nebraska awaiting the kick by Oklahoma as the Sooners have taken the lead again on a 69-yard march in 11 plays. Jack Milton to John Harrison for the score. 31 to 28 with seven minutes, 10 seconds to go in the game. Here's the kick into the wind. Kicking it away from Rogers, it goes to Kenny, a very dangerous and tough runner. But he is tripped up by number 37 of Oklahoma, Gary Young, a sophomore from Clinton. And let's watch the touchdown again. Harrison, wide receiver for Oklahoma. Little inside fake, great backfield fake. And he beats Cush badly to the outside, wide open as he catches the ball. Harrison, four catches, 115 yards, and two touchdowns. Now Jerry Taggy from his own 26, first and 10. Nebraska in the white jerseys. They trail by four. And here's Rodgers. And he lost his footing. The man that had a shot at him was number 96, Raymond Hamilton, but couldn't quite grab him. Let's take another view of the touchdown. You can see the fine inside faking. And Mildren... 
Kenny Harrison, who was wide open to the outside, having fake Cush. 6.43 to go. Oklahoma 31, Nebraska 28. Nebraska number one in the rankings. Oklahoma number two. Second and six from the 30. Jerry Taggy. Jeff Kenny. Chris, you've played all season dreaming about getting into this game. Now you've got six minutes and 19 seconds to go, and on both sides, every down, every snap could be the play that decides the ball game, and the pressure equally on the Oklahoma defense to get the ball one more time, and on Nebraska's offense to sustain this drive as we look at Jack Mildred. What a star he is, Ben. He's putting on a different set of shoes, hopefully of using them soon, but right now, Nebraska third and one at their own 35. Taggy. That's a good man to give it to when you need a yard or more. Look at that power runner. Jeff Kenny, bud. Let's watch him again as he runs through three Oklahoma defenders. Short yardage. Toss back from Taggy. He puts the ball away. Watch his power. That's one man. There comes the second. That's Acock. He slides by the third. That's O'Shaughnessy. Finally is barely pulled down. Jeff Kenny has scored twice for the Cornhuskers today. Moving the ball to the Oklahoma 48, first down. <laughs> Gary Dixon, number 22, who uh, is giving Kenny a rest, carried for the first time today, and now the clock. 5.15 to go, 31-24. Plenty of time for Nebraska, but if they do score, it'll be awfully short time for the Oklahoma offense. Ball now is at the 46. It is second down and eight for the Cornhuskers. They've gone 29 games without defeat. Nice pick by Taggy. Jerry List is going deep, but the receiver is covered. But then coming up short was Rogers on a comeback try. Off the shoulder pad. Third down and eight for Nebraska. Don't forget this Saturday, Army-Navy game to be followed at 4 Eastern time. Undefeated Auburn going against undefeated Alabama. The two opponents for these two teams in the bowl games January 1st. But this is a game that has overshadowed all the bowl talk because the national rankings, possible national championship at stake, but the pride of both teams are at stake here, and you couldn't dream up a better game. And this snap could very well decide it. 4.50 to go. Third down and eight. A lone setback with two wings out and in going out now. Taggy, oh, just missed again by 96 Hamilton. Johnny Rogers caught the ball, and it's a Nebraska first down and a big one, sustaining this drive and controlling the ball. Let's watch Rogers. Had Hamilton not lost the leverage, and you got to give Taggy credit for the move he made. Rogers circling. Coming back, Taggy has run now. And on the run, he finds Rogers open. Puts it in there where no one can bat the ball down. About two feet off the ground. Five catches, 59 yards for Rogers. First and 10 at the Oklahoma 36. Frosty Anderson is in the lineup, split to the near side. There's the Rambler. Can't he move? Jeff Kenny. Number 35. Think, Chris, that maybe Oklahoma let him score and get the ball and have time enough to maybe get one back yourself. Tonight on ABC at 8, another game. Georgia, Georgia Tech from Atlanta. And at halftime, the Downtown Athletic Club of New York will make its annual announcement of the Heisman Trophy winner. With the ball now at the 22. It's first and 10. Cornhusker, 3.59 to go in the game. They trail by three. Look at this run. Johnny Rogers slipping away, falling to the 15 for a seven-yard game. Oklahoma. Slippery. Oklahoma in position to make the tackle several times, but it makes a big difference who you're trying to tackle. The clock, the big factor. If Oklahoma does not stop them. It'll be very difficult for them to have time enough left to score. Woody Cox going to the far side. Rogers is uh, an inside slot man on second and three from the 15. And that's the man to give it to. Jeff Kenny. 
Mark Driscoll made the tackle, but not before Kenny had gone inside the 10 to the 8. A seven-yard gain. It is first and goal for the Cornhuskers, who have trailed twice today at halftime, 17-14. Then they came back to lead 28-24. Oklahoma came back to take the lead, 31-28. We have three minutes left in the game. Trailing by three, Nebraska first and goal from the Oklahoma 8. Jeff Kenny had a little trouble controlling the ball on the pitch from Taggy, but once he did, he moved upfield for a couple of yards. And on the play, Raymond Hamilton, 96, and Selman, 98, at the six-yard line. And that clock continues to tick away if Nebraska scores. There'll be less than two minutes for Oklahoma. If they do not score, they'll not get the ball again. Right now, second and goal at the six. Meanwhile, Taggy comes trotting over to head coach Bob Devaney, a, gra a graduate of Alma, a native of Sagamaw, 15 years, and what a record he has. So we have a timeout at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. The score, Oklahoma 31, Nebraska 28. It was anticipated a close battle between the two top-ranked teams in the country. 2.20 to go. Second down, goal to go at the Oklahoma 6. Nebraska trailing by 3, 31 to 28. Going to the far side as a split end is Woody Cox. In the slot eye formation, Jerry Taggy, number 14, calls signal. What a man to stop. Jeff Kenny, a fumble. Oklahoma players say that they've recovered it, but the officials say no. Let's watch it again. Kenny, the ball carrier, eye formation, power, old blocking ahead of him. He moves outside of the block. He's hit. There's the grab for the ball. He fights through the man. He still has got good possession of the ball. His knee is on the ground now. He is on the ground now. Third and goal from the two. What pressure on the Oklahoma defense. Not to be denied, Jeff Kenny, his third touchdown of the afternoon. And Nebraska has regained the lead, 34 to 31. Wow, hope you're enjoying this game. It's one of many here on ABC over a seven-day period. We have more to come, including a game tonight, Georgia-Georgia Tech. Then on Saturday, Army-Navy to be followed by the Battle of the Unbeatens, Auburn-Alabama. And 138 remaining. Rick Sanger will try the point after with the score being 34 to 31. Total of 65 points scored out here this afternoon. The kick is up and good. A beautiful drive of 74 sustained yards. 12 plays. Watch the touchdown again. High formation. Holds leading Kenny in. Fran Kroger, not Olds, I'm sorry, and he makes a great block. Beautiful, beautiful block on the Oklahoma defensive end, opening it up for Kinney to drive it clearly across the goal line for the Nebraska touchdown. But he is one of the truly power, run, power runners that we've seen in college football in our NCAA series, which has covered six years. Wouldn't you agree? I certainly would. 6'2", 210, and he's got burning determination. Now, two good kick returners are deep for Oklahoma. Bob Devaney has got a choice here, too, Chris. You can spin kick it, and you know that uh, there won't be a return, but you've got a wind at your back, and maybe if you catch it just right, you can kick it out of the end zone. If you don't, though, you've got Wiley and Pruitt back there. Wiley, 22, Pruitt, number 30. This is the time that Pruitt would like to show his speed. He hasn't had much chance today. This time, it's picked up, whoops, by Wiley. Wiley finds a hole, but is up and down at the 20-yard line. Coming up immediately following our game, the Prudential College scoreboard with Bud Palmer and Merle Harmon. Scores and highlights of other games being played here on this holiday, which we hope is a pleasant one for all of you and that this game has helped make it so. Oklahoma, so. Oklahoma scored in 55 seconds right before the first half. 
They've got almost twice as much time left in this half. They have to move it from their own 19 with a first and 10. And Milgren immediately wants to go to the air, throwing it long off. Harrison had his man beaten, but the pass was overthrown. 27, Joel Blahock of Columbus, Nebraska, was covering Harrison on the play. Jack Milgren disappointed as a second down and 10 comes up now. On the clock, a minute 28 seconds. And you're always debating, you know, they're going to be thinking pass and they're going to ignore the running fake slightly. Maybe they'll give Pruitt a little running room. A four point lead by Nebraska. Last time Oklahoma was defeated, 28 to 21 last year by Nebraska. Second and 10 for the Sooners. Mildren. And Mildren is near the sideline after about a four yard gain. Bill Jansen forcing him out, number 55. Joined by 81, Willie Harper. Ball near the 23, the hash mark. So it'll be a third down and six. And a big one. Mildren, 30 carries, 139 yards rushing. Threw a touchdown pass, scored two himself. Now trailing by four, a minute 21 to go. A number one defensive unit in the nation, led by Larry Jacobson, number 75, throw Mildred for the loss inside the 15-yard line, bringing up fourth down at about 14, with a minute 14 to go, bud. And Nebraska one snap away from maintaining the number one rating and defending their national championship. Unbeaten in 29 games. What a well-balanced unit, Nebraska. And what a great second half of offense after being held in 91 yards in the first half. That's right, and trailing at halftime, 17-14. You know they're going to be playing pass. They've only had single coverage on Harrison all afternoon. It'll be double coverage this time. We'll be presenting the Chevrolet Outstanding Offensive and Defensive Players of the Game Award. $1,000 scholarship for the school scholarship fund on behalf of the winning players. And Jack Mildren, after talking to head coach Chuck Fairbanks, Moves slowly on the tartan turf on a gray and now dim afternoon as the field lights are not on. And the game, Chris, has come down to one snap. And the season has come down to one snap for both of these teams. And, of course, uh, both Oklahoma and Nebraska have a game to be played. Nebraska going to Honolulu to play the University of Hawaii. And Oklahoma going against their interstate rival, Oklahoma State. So here it is from the wishbone. Fourth down and 14. Mildred looking. Mildred getting away. The ball knocked down by, guess who? Rich Glover, number 79. Jacobson was the first in. Look at the size of that defensive tackle. Six feet six, 250 pounds. And the Nebraska players are happy and well they should be because they were down twice, 17-14. They trailed another time, 21-17, as Glover, number 79, gets the congratulations he deserves, and my vote goes to him for the defensive player of the game, There's bud. No question about it, Chris. I've seen a lot of great middle guards, but don't think I've ever seen anyone that is as consistently strong as Glover. So now at the 15-yard line, Jerry Taggy, who's had a fine afternoon, calls signals for the Cornhuskers from Lincoln. He's not going to throw it, I promise you. No. <laughs> Coming in fast on. From Lincoln. He's not going to throw it, I promise you. <laughs> Coming in fast on Taggy, number 81, Albert Qualls of Houston, Texas. Less than a minute to go. And only a miracle could change the score on the scoreboard, 35 to 31. Wide, wide open. This is... Johnny Rogers, but when you're ahead in a game of this kind, uh, even though as your precision is taggy, there is no reason to do anything except run the clock out, and when the quarterback has the ball himself, that's the safest place. The average rushing production by Nebraska in the first 10 games, 257 yards. Here this afternoon, they have rushed for 263. And Jack Mildren played a tremendous football game. Number 11. Doesn't keep it from being a little heartbroken right now. That's and he's worried a little bit about the pass protection having broken down on the last two passes that he attempted. 
We'd like to thank Chuck Fairbanks, his staff, Athletic Director Wade Walker, and Sports Information Director Johnny Keith here at Oklahoma. Also, our expression of appreciation to Bob Devaney, his staff, and Sports Information Director Don Brand at the University of Nebraska for all their help. So now it's a second down and six. 55 seconds left in the game. Nebraska leading 35-31. Taggy of Nebraska. Just controlling the football. And Oklahoma's used up their last time out, I believe, Chris. So the clock is going to run out after one more snap. Mark Driscoll coming in on the tackle. Back at the 12-yard line. So it'll be a third down and seven as we made a mistake on our counting. This is their third time out. So it'll be third down and seven from the 12 for Nebraska. There is Chuck Fairbanks, hands in his pocket on the far side of the field, the Oklahoma coach. It's a tough, tough feeling. You have the shot at the national championship and it's gotten away from you. The Prudential College scoreboard immediately follows, follows our telecast from Norman, Oklahoma today. From New York, Bud Palmer and Merle Harmon will be giving you all the scores. And then tonight, It'll be Georgia, Georgia Tech, Keith Jackson, and Lee Grosk up there to cover the game. And then Bud Bill and I will be in Birmingham, Alabama for the Auburn-Alabama game at 4 Saturday to be preceded by the Army-Navy game, Philadelphia. And uh, it's a long weekend for the wives that don't like football. <laughs> Most wives do, I believe. I do, too. We hope they do. <laughs> All right, 41 seconds, third down and seven. Nebraska with the ball. And Jeff Kenny heading toward the five yard line. And on the board, we see 31 seconds. The clock is running. We got to snap it once more. <laughs> They'll take the delay of the game penalty here, Chris, I believe. At least that's uh, the way most teams are coached. Uh, you might as well use the full 25 seconds. However, as it counts down to about six or eight, he'll snap it, I believe, Oklahoma having exhausted the timeouts. Here's the fourth down play, and ever trying, Jeff Kinney carries the ball, and now Nebraska, only three seconds away from retaining its number one ranking, showing us a balanced offense and a super defense against one of the most exciting teams ever, the Oklahoma Sooners. The ball at the three. And there it is. Congratulations to both teams. Just a tremendous battle here. Pride of both teams very evident throughout the 60 minutes on the clock. And all the excitement and color. The showcase of college football, I believe, Bud, has been a great success and a great victory for the Cornhuskers. And there goes heavy Bob Devaney. And that's one of those glorious moments for a football coach. So two unbeatens on Saturday. Auburn, Alabama will be televising that one at 4 Eastern time. And the final score again, Nebraska 31, Oklahoma, or correction, 35-31, Nebraska the winner.